in this module we will prove the relationship between the three especially in the context of open economy globalized economy internationalization of business this time with the reference of a research work so in this module we will discuss results of a research on the impact of globalized economy on gender and work in state institutes in china as our talk was about china in the earlier modules in state institutes there is no gender discrimination in work in a way the government of china favors feminism feminism means there is no discrimination of any kind just on the basis of a person's sex so feminists are against this so government itself is doing this under its patronage this is a kind of state feminism the state recruitment is open to both sexes for men and for women but job assignment is still discriminatory in non physical jobs non physical jobs in which physical work is not involved no woman is assigned job of the public face of any company this is the situation of state owned businesses and institutions so number 1 there is state feminism number 2 there is no discrimination on the basis of sex in recruitment but there is discrimination in job assignment and number 2 as in international companies government uh, women are placed in front row positions in state owned institution it doesn't happen female linguistic style is not preferred this is another feature of state owned institute so these were results of a study with reference to state sector in china but there was difference in professional group of chinese working with foreign companies in china now this is the other side of the picture this time they are talking about their findings with reference to this sector first they say that we see preference for females as public face of the companies and as secretaries to higher management this role is particularly reserved for female people they are hired for their decorative value and foreign language skills so uh, there is an other capital that is possessed only by women and that is aesthetic capital the physical attraction so now we have two cultural capitals in which women are superior to men physical attractiveness and linguistic skills so because of these two cultural capitals they are preferred in a uh, front row job foreign companies do this for two reasons why do they prefer these two things in women number 1 to import the gendered practice from their original parent organization this is international business its headquarters its original company definitely is located in some other country outside china so their culture would be different their even workplace culture would be different from that of china so in this way by selecting women with these two uh, cultural capital they try to introduce the same parent culture in china and when they do so actually they are presenting contrast to the people to their clients 
that this is the culture in China and this is the culture in the parent organization. These gender differences which are maintained in international businesses according to the findings of this study, they even fix different career paths for men and women. With the same higher degrees, which is also possessed by men, women pursue a different path. They, for example, are recruited as receptionist, as secretary. So this is how they move along this path. Even when they are at some management post, they are expected to continue their function of communication, uh, with international clients and the things which they have been doing at lower position. Men enter on the other side, their career path would be dif different. They enter in the main business activity. They are recruited for sales department and etc. for example with the same degree possessed by women. But they move along a path where they go to higher positions in main business activity. In this group of professionals, women face restrictions on their language. Whatever position uh, is held by them, everywhere there is restriction on their use of language. But such kind of restriction is not imposed on men because they are not recruited for that particular reason, for that particular capital. They will talk only in English and Mandarin Chinese, that is standard Chinese language. So we conclude that in globalized economy, especially in China, gender and language variety are closely linked with work, job assignment and career paths are affected both by gender and language. Here is a task for you so that you may understand the relationship between gender, language skills and work in your own local context. For in this task you are required to visit some uh, schools, one private and one state owned government school of any level in your neighborhood. Find out who is doing which job and why he or she was selected for their job? Is there any role of gender and language skills in job assignments at both the schools? 